Hey guys, I'm Allison. I'm the Pampered Wife. We have a bit of a different setting today. I'm still in my same art room that I always film in. I'm just sitting at my desk because I've got a few purchases I want to go over and there are boxes and I just thought it would be easier to film here. Full disclosure, I'm recovering from that illness. Today is my first day that I feel well enough to actually film something. I have a lot of makeup on for you so that hopefully <laughs> you can look at me. I'm gonna try to edit out any blowing of the nose and coughing and sniffing, but I'm sure you'll see sniffing. So we've got um, quite a few boxes woo, here. <laughs> I've got Beauty Heroes, I've got Credo, I've got Crave Beauty, and then I have a couple of random things that I picked up on my own. So let's just go ahead and jump into it. Oh, before we jump into it, um, where have I been? I'm gonna timestamp everything, so this will be part of the intro. If you don't care where I've been, I get it. Just look at the timestamps below and jump forward. But. First, I'm gonna tell you where I've been, the Instagram version where everything looks rosy and sunny and beautiful. And then I'm gonna tell you the reality version, which is the other side of the camera where there's dog vomit in the carpet and the baby is crying and the bill collector is calling. So it's gonna sound glamorous and then you'll hear the real deal. I went with my husband and son and son's friend to the UK. We were there for, I think 14 days. We started in London, spent a few nights, then we went to Edinburgh, where we toured the Edinburgh Castle. We were there for five nights. It's a historic city, lots of history. Like, Americans can't even understand how old and the history that goes on. Then we spent the next five or so nights changing locations. Sometimes we spent more than one night, but for simplicity, we were in a car and drove down through the English countryside spending a night here and there along the way. It was exquisite. We really lucked out with the weather. We stayed in places that were an old, old castle. I mean built in 1100, kind of old. We stayed in um, above a pub at the head of the river in Oxford. We stayed in an old English manor in Cumbria. We stayed in the Cotswolds. It was glorious. Um, oh, I forgot we also stayed in Glasgow or Glasgow for a few nights, making our way back to London where we eventually left. My husband's son and son's friend flew back to the States and I went on to Italy to meet some girlfriends where we started in Venice. And I will leave the story there and tell you reality. Uh, we had a wonderful time in London the first few days, went up to Edinburgh where my son started feeling not well. We kept testing him for COVID, he was negative. So we went about our business. By the time we got to Glasgow, my husband tested positive for COVID. The UK has no COVID restrictions. They suggest you wear a mask, but you don't even have to. You don't have to isolate, nothing. Which of course blew my mind because I'm from the States. We did keep him isolated. The rest of us tested morning and night and we kept testing negative. By the time we left Glasgow, I did test positive. So when we got to our next location, I isolated. My husband was all better. He was actually only sick for like two days. Um, long story short, I was sick the entire rest of the time. My son's friend tested positive five days before we left because my husband was thinking of extending the stay. But apparently if you're under 18, after three days, you can go in public or something like that. So we waited the full five days, flew them home. I had then had it long enough that I shouldn't have been contagious anymore. So I flew on to Italy and to Venice to be exact, which is a gorgeous city I had never been to. If you can ever go, I highly recommend it. Two nights is probably enough, but I just never recovered. And instead of going on, with the trip, which was to Florence and Rome and somewhere else, I came home. It's I've now been home for a decent amount of time and I'm still recovering. <clears throat> That's the real story. We did not do much sightseeing or anything once one of us tested positive. Oh, the kicker, my son was just bonus sick in Edinburgh. When he got home, two days later, he tested positive. So he actually never had it on our trip. That was just a bonus illness. So he was pretty mad. 
and um, I guess my husband was patient zero. So let's go ahead and jump into my purchases, shall we? I know I've got a little bit of makeup, skincare, and I don't know. Let's just go ahead. So first from Beauty Heroes, this was their Beauty Heroes subscription box. I don't subscribe, but I had to have it. This is how it comes packaged. It says, hey, conscious consumer, your order was packed by a Beauty Heroes team member with care. Certified plastic negative by Repurpose Global and shipped to you carbon neutral via Cloverly. That's what my little sticker says. This is the luxury limited edition discovery box. It's Le Prunier, which is very pricey. I'm not gonna read this whole thing, but I will read you what's inside. First, we have the Plum Screen Broad Spectrum SPF 31. This is the reason I wanted to get this box because it's a new release. I can't remember, I, I wanna say it's close to $100 to buy this. I'll put the actual price on the screen. And in this Beauty Heroes, you know, box, it was a deal. And I'm so excited to try it. Here's what it has to say about it. We hope you just discovered your new sun protecting hero product in Le Prunier's just launched daily SPF 31. Tinted only with the color of nature, this physical block combines only 4.7 non nano zinc oxide with pro vitamin A rich plum seed oil, patented plum superfruit complex, known for its UVA, UVB, and blue light ray shielding qualities, and brown seaweed. The generous tube makes it easy to reapply on the go. Add a drop or two of the plum beauty oil to your plum screen when you apply to boost efficacy and glow factor. If you're not familiar with Le Prunier, on the one hand you're lucky because then you don't have an obsession that is extraordinarily pricey. There's no scent. I didn't even have to squeeze it. It is aluminum packaging. Uh, it says clinically tested, allergy tested, dermatologist approved, reef safe, non comedogenic cruelty free, apply liberally and evenly in the morning after Le Prunier Plum Beauty Oil and before makeup, reapply at least every two hours. So it is a light cream. It is more of a lotion, very light lotion. And as I'm rubbing it in, I can feel a little bit of the oil but it's not particularly greasy. I mean, that was a lot for my hand. I live at a high altitude, so it just came squirting out. That's the one negative about these um, aluminum type packaging is without me even squeezing, the product usually just comes shooting out. This wasn't terrible. I don't see any tint. I do see a really pretty sheen, dewiness. I'm gonna give that a minute to dry down. It already feels nice. Just like a moisturizer. It doesn't feel tacky, it just feels moisturized. So I'm gonna give that a minute. And now let's go on to their first product, their Hero product. I believe these are the only two products Le Prunier has. I'll read you the back of the box first. It says our 100% organic anti-aging plum beauty oil helps restore, replenish, and balance skin. This proprietary blend of plum varietals is an excellent source of antioxidants, polyphenols, fatty acids, and nourishing vitamins that locks in moisture for a soft, youthful glow. Perfect for all skin types, including sensitive and acne prone. The only ingredients is organic, Prunus Domestica seed oil. Apply day and night onto cleansed face, decolletage, and body. What the sheet has to say about it is this proprietary blend of CCOF certified 100% organic plum seed oil is non-comedogenic, essential oil free, and rich in omegas that feel cushiony on the skin while locking in hydration, rich in beta carotene, provitamin A, and natural tocopherols, which is vitamin E, Le Prunier's signature oil is perfect for day or night and blended as a booster with your other skincare. Apply generously on face and neck and enjoy the fruit forward nutty aroma. Massage a drop on nails and finger through your hair. So I have tried this before. Uh, this brand was founded in 1916. I'm not going to go into the history, but you can certainly read about it. I love that they're a brand that's focused only on what they know, keep their line very small. It's more of an expertise and I love that. This is glass packaging, it's black, I could probably to preserve the oil. I'm not going to open it right now because I don't know the shelf life on this. Well, I can't read it, but I know it'll start to probably oxidize or degrade once I open it, so I'm not gonna do that. 
I'm just so excited about the sunscreen. It's really elegant. That formula is really elegant and my skin just feels moisturized. I can't say it's really dried down. It just, when I look at it myself, not so much in the light, maybe this way you can see it. It just looks more moisturized, it's on this hand. And I love that oil, I'm thrilled to have it again. I've just not bought it because I haven't wanted to splurge and there's always other stuff I wanna try, but holy cow, it's fantastic. Let's go on to Crave Beauty. They have a recent launch of a first cleanse cleanser and I really like their products, so I went ahead and got it. Let's just start with that one. Oh, this is cool. I watched uh, Lisa, uh, why can't I think of her name? The founder of Crave Beauty. I watched her presentation of the launch and so I learned a little bit about this. But this is Makeup Rewind and it's, whoop, I guess it came open. Um, rewind is in the wine that you drink. And so this is what it has to say. One of Vineyard's trash is one skincare company's treasure. Our upcycled grapeseed oil comes from the wasteland of your favorite glass of red. So next time you take a sip or two, remember our Makeup Rewind shares the same vine. So this is supposed to be a different type of cleanser. The texture, let's see, she describes it as a jiggly jelly, can't live without face wash, that makes melting away makeup fun, cleansing balms are too much stress, oil cleansers are too much mess. What it does, gently removes makeup and buildup without leaving behind greasy residue. Skin instructions, use as needed day or night, massage gently on dry skin, rinse with lukewarm water, use as a first step. It starts as a jelly balm, then melts into a smooth, non-comedogenic oil to deep, clean skin and pores. When you're ready to rinse, it transition, transitions into a light milk to effortly wash away makeup, sunscreen, and oil-based impurities without leaving your skin sensitive or greasy. This company is very into environmental and friendly steps, and so it's not surprising to me that Leah, I think it's her name, chose to use a waste product from any industry, but the wine industry specifically. Oh, I, I think I showed you the box. It just has the information on it. It's this cute purple. Oh, and there was a way to open it, which is interesting because it was pretty darn easy to open, but it does have one of these tabs that you can tear and open oh and open it that way and there is a plethora of information even though it's in plastic i'm sure it's she's explained it why that choice was made let's open it well first let's see if it has the seal and it does oh i hope it doesn't come oozing out so far so good so it's a flip cap and I'll just put it on the sunscreen, which again, still just feels moisturized on my hand. It's dried down some more. So I only put a little bit, but there's the texture. It's not at all runny. Hmm. It's sort of a gel and rubbing it in. Okay, well, I can't tell you much and I don't have water here, just my hot tea. But the rationale behind this was that oil cleansers, yeah, are, you know, uh, liquidy and runny and messy and run all over you when you put them on. Balm cleansers are messy. You have to stick your hand in or get a utensil, put it in, and they're thick, and oftentimes you have to remove them with a washcloth. This is something completely different texture-wise, just easy, not messy. Yeah. And yet it washes clean just with water, turns milky, and should wash everything away. She does then have, oh, a cleanser, which I've never tried and really wanted to for a second cleanse, but they were out of it. So instead I got the Great Body Relief Smooth Reparative Body Lotion. I just wanted to try more from the brand. This moisturizes, calms, and helps restore damaged, sensitive skin back to health. Has tamanu oil, rosehip oil, ceramides, fermented oils, squalane, and glycerin. No essential oils, which I love. I'm very sensitive to essential oils. Balancing moisture and barrier, strengthening ingredients. And it does have the same pull tab here on the side, which I find is more of a pain to get into. <sighs> These things never really work anyway, but let's see. 
Yeah, more sustainability. This is why everything's in plastic. When we researched if we could use glass here, we discovered transporting the added weight would significantly increase each product's carbon footprint, so we made a choice. We don't know, we can't say post-consumer recycled plastic is the best possible solution, and we know that recycling in general isn't a completely sustainable solution, but it's the right one for where we are right now. We're not a huge brand yet, but we hope that as more skincare and beauty brands make the switch to PCR plastic, the industry's dependence on oil and natural gas will decrease. That's why plastic. Let's go ahead and see if this one, yep, this also, have that little seal. I'm gonna put it on the back of the other hand. Same kind of squeezy tube. Almost greenish. Can you see that? You know if you've watched my channel, I love when a brand is consistent. Even though these are different colors, the packaging goes together. I can see the little I don't know, paint swatch for lack of a better description. The font, how it's branded, that it is the same company. Thank you, Crave Beauty. So let's go ahead and rub this in. This is definitely like thicker than the sunscreen I put on. It's still a lightweight lotion. Feels moisturizing. Surprisingly so, because lotions to me just usually aren't very moisturizing. I have dry skin and live in a dry climate. Yeah, I don't think I smell anything. Oh, that feels really nice. That sunk right in. That's really lovely. And then last but not least, something I've really wanted to try, the Great Barrier Relief. This is Reparative Skin Soothing Serum that relieves and rebalances sensitive skin by replenishing the skin barrier. Damaged skin can't, can breathe a sigh of relief. Transforms sensitive skin from irritable to amiable. We create a great barrier relief to be your skin barrier's patch-up job, packed with rebalancing actives. This nourishing serum replenishes barrier strength while soothing sensitivity and clearing up skin. And it's got the same packaging with the same pull tab that I'm not gonna do. And here is this product. And again, even though it's a different form of packaging, it does have the same brand cohesiveness. Guess I need to take this. I'm not sure. We'll see. Let's see if it pumps out. Oh, it did. And I think it's that same greenish color as the lotion. I was expecting clear because it's a serum. It's definitely thinner than the lotion. Just feels like a lightweight lotion. So we'll see how that goes. I probably will try to get my son to use that. He has dry skin. He turns red at everything. I'm not sure if he has rosacea, but if he goes like this, there's a red spot there for the like an hour. Well, that sunk right at like, there's scarcely anything left. I think it's left more on my fingers than on my skin. So that is Crave Beauty. I'm sweating. I know it's just cause I'm not feeling well. It's not hot in here. This is the most activity I've had in, well, over a week. Let's move on to Credo. I've only got two things from Credo, and they always send this marketing piece, which I kind of feel like is just waste, but I guess you know it's from Credo. It says, where all beauty is clean beauty. Let me know in the comment section if you've tried anything from EXA, which is Credo's house brand. I've never tried anything from them, so I'm just curious. The main thing that I'd be interested in trying is the under eye concealer, but I've got quite a few right now. But anyway, let me know if you've tried anything from EXA and what you would recommend if you have or what you thought of it. There, I'm gonna go rinse everything off. So we're starting with a clean slate and I can test out these products that I got right here. I'll be right back. Okay, clean slate. I just noticed that picture on the floor that needs to be hung. So I got two things. The first, well, these are both newer releases. Let me start by saying that. This is the Maya Chia Watercolor Super Antioxidant Instant Glow Hydrating Serum and Gradual Sunless Tan. So this is a new launch. I saw it, I had to buy it. The idea is you apply it every day as a serum every morning. I guess you could use it at night. We'll read the box and see what it has to say, but it will gradually tan wherever you put it. So no streakiness, no lines, no missed spots. So let's see what it has to say. Watercolor 
is an instant glowing hydrating serum that provides the added benefit of a gradual sunless tan for a healthy radiant glow. Our innovative formulation is powered by super antioxidants, chibula and astaxanthin to help combat skin aging and inflammation. Additionally, this formula offers protection against environmental pollutions and aggressors such as blue light. Please note this product does not offer SPF protection from the sun's rays. A combination of Cosmos EcoCert approved DHA, which is what is in sunless tanners and erythrulose I'm guessing that also is a sunless tanner agent derived from fermented keto sugars builds a natural looking tan gradually without the risk of sun damage true high performance skincare meets self tan the result healthy radiant and youthful looking skin directions Ugh. for best results exfoliate skin prior to use for maximum color Dispense a small amount into palm of hand and spread evenly across face for gradual, gradual color. Mix two to three pumps into daily moisturizer and apply to face. Allow two to four hours for tan to develop. Additional pumps will augment the color. Use daily to build and maintain your glow. Rinse hands after application. So this is just like all the other Maya Chia products as far as packaging. Thank you, Maya Chia. It is the opaque glass containers with the pump. They all come with a top, which I use when I travel because this is one fluid ounce. She's pricey. Let's go ahead and see what she looks like. Well, in addition to the pump, to the top, you also turn it to open and close it, which I forgot recently on my travels and that explains a lot. Don't really smell anything. It is brown. I was not expecting that. Okay, I thought it would be a really thin oil. It's not, as you can see. Is it starting to run? Barely starting to run. All right. Oh, it's very thin. Feels like water. It will gradually, in two to four hours, reveal color. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this side too. Um, it smells almost like cloves. Maybe frankincense. I do smell a little something. It's very subtle, but if it were on my face, I'm sure I would smell it. And I know you can see the full ingredients. Um, I'm just gonna look. First ingredient is aloe juice. It does have citric acid and vanilla extract, mandarin oil, blood orange. So maybe that's what I'm smelling. It smells nice. Okay, it pretty much dried down to nothing. So we will see how that goes. I'm excited. Another new release. It's not as new as the Maya Chia, but it's newer. It's the Cure Weiss, the beautiful tint. And I wasn't gonna get this because it is a tinted moisturizer. And my philosophy on a tinted moisturizer is why? I'm gonna put sunscreen on over my moisturizer. I might as well have a beautiful tint to my sunscreen but I don't need it in my moisturizer. However, I've seen so many reviews of this and people are wearing it like a foundation, like just a very light, natural looking foundation. And I absolutely love the Kira Weiss Invisible Touch Liquid Foundation. It's my favorite of all time, but I won't let myself buy it because that's all I would reach for. And you know, I wanna keep trying new things. So I thought, oh, okay, this is different. I can try this. <clears throat> here we go. Well, here's the packaging. It looks like the back just has ingredients on it. It is 1.35 ounces, and I got the shade M1. Now, I knew this before I got it. It comes in this plastic pump, which is surprising because Curewise was the first brand that I'm aware of to come out with refillable packaging for years before clean beauty was a thing and recycling was a thing, they had refillable packaging. So I'm sure research went into this. I don't know what it is. I don't have any information on it that came with it. It is surprising. It feels disappointing unless they have a really good reason, which I'm hoping they do. I'm pretty sure they do. But as far as use, I really like the packaging because it dispenses most of the product. It's not messy because it is this pump and it's lightweight. 
it is surprising to me, if you're familiar with Cure Weiss, they have all this luxury packaging. Even for the Invisible Touch Their Liquid Foundation, you can buy a special top for it that's expensive, but just, I guess, makes it look prettier sitting on your vanity. It does have lots of skin care benefits. It is a moisturizer. Let's swatch it on the back of my hand, shall we? And now my hand feels smooth from that water, from the Maya Chia water sun tint. What is this thing called? Watercolor. My skin just feels smooth. I wouldn't say slick or dry, but like there's a finish on it that dried down and it's a little slicker. And again, I got the shade M1. My son is home. <clears throat> It does have that Cure Weiss scent, which I adore. Some people hate. I heard a comment recently that it smells like heliotrope, which I have no idea to confirm or deny that. I'm trying to see how watery it is. Not, it's a thicker cream or lotion. Oh, it feels nice. It feels like a whipped lotion. Oh, I love the smell. As it dries down or as you rub it out, it does smell a little like Play-Doh. I do have to admit that once I made that or I heard that comment, I couldn't unhear it. And I have to admit that it's true, but I love it. I love it. I mostly rubbed it out. It was very easy. It looks like a really good shade for me. Looks like light to medium coverage, although it's a bit streaky and tacky. That could be what I have on underneath it. That's water color. Hmm. Let's see if you can see that. You can definitely see where I stopped the shade. Maybe it's not a good color. There you see the finish, the shade, the coverage. Definitely has coverage. At least on top of that Maya Chia watercolor, it's just sitting on the skin and it's tacky. So I'm not gonna be disappointed yet. I'm definitely gonna try this multiple different ways. And I would have sunscreen on underneath it. So even if I did wear this water color underneath it, I was a barrier in between. I'll also try it on my skin by itself. And that's that. Let me know if you've tried this and what you think. Or, or if you're interested in the Maya Chia product and if you got it. Like, let me know if you've tried any of these products, actually. I would love to get your feedback. Three more products. Let's start with the makeup one. This is the Mineral Fusion. I'm trying to see what they call it. I know what it is. Retractable Brow Pencil. Shape and Define, Making Beauty Healthy. And I got the shade Dark Brown. I didn't even know Mineral Fusion had a brow pencil. I actually love this brand. I love their lipsticks. Oh, I love their SPF powder. I'm sure I've tried other things. Anyway. Kind of fallen off my radar. I really love the PYT brow pencil. It's inexpensive. I love the shade and how it wears. Woo! So let's see what it has to say about it. Velvety glide on pigments, long lasting buildable coverage infused with botanicals. Use pencil to shape and fill in eyebrows. Follow with the brush to shape and blend color for a more natural look. Hypoallergenic, vegan, leaping bunny certified, gluten free, fragrance free. I don't know why anyone would put fragrance in an eye product or product that's going in or around your eyes. I really like the packaging. I'm hoping they've rebranded and look less 70s and more current, but this is like a light pink with their, uh, like a gold foil. And of course it has their branding on it, so I can still tell it's Mineral Fusion. Their branding has this circle and the same font. All right, this is the pencil side. It's small and domed. Reminds me of the plume. I'm gonna put it on the hand that I did not put the uh, foundation. This might be a little dark for me. It's definitely a cool brown. That's when I put it on immediately and smear it with my hand. Did leave pigment behind. I'm gonna retract that. Oh, it snaps in place. Love that. The only criticism I have about the packaging then is that I wish this side looked a little different from this side because I can't tell which is the pencil and which is the brush. But that's just me being picky. I love that it has the brush. Very firm, narrow, small. 
looks like it'll do the job. So I will test this out and wear this. Two more things. I got the Up Circle Eye Cream with repurposed maple and coffee extract to firm and brighten. I'm always looking for a good eye cream. Right now I'm using the Kipris, excuse me. Like I was saying, right now I'm using the Kipris under eye cream, their night cream, and I do love it, but it's very expensive, and no matter what I think of it, I'm not gonna repurchase it. So this, I'm not familiar really with Up Circle and love to try new brands. Apply a small amount around the contour of the eye, can be worn under makeup. For best results, use morning and night. The caffeine is to brighten, and there's hyaluronic acid to hydrate and plump. 99% natural. Pioneering skincare regenerative by design. Glass packaging looks like a pump. Let me know if you've tried anything by Upcycle. Am I behind the times, or is this a brand that is new to you as well? I love a pump. It's more sanitary. It's not gonna come shooting out like the aluminum packages do. I know there's more waste even if it's glass because you can't recycle this part, but no scent. Nice, light, creamy lotion. Easy to spread out. We'll see how that goes. Then finally, I got the Neil's Yard Wild Rose AHA Toner. When I was in London, I saw a couple of their stores. I actually saw one and I'm trying to think if it was Glasgow. I think it was. Um, and bought a few things there. I have a serum that is lovely, an aloe base serum from them. I have a cleanser that's really nice, foams, and all their packaging looks like this. So the cleanser looks just like this as well. Um, do I have anything else? Oh, I bought a hand lotion, which I really like because I didn't have hand lotion on my trip. And so this is a toner, and I thought I'd give it a try. Certified organic for all skin types. Really nothing to say about this. Oh, you do shake well before using. Yeah, you gotta read the instructions. I never would have done that. Yeah, I believe Rose, everything is, well, this is Wild Rose. Everything in this line, which is what I've purchased, is the Wild Rose line, it has a rose scent. So we'll see if this is gentle enough for me to use. I typically stay away from exfoliants. Um, just because my skin is so dry. So those are all my purchases, quite a lot, but that's what I came back to after my trip. Let me know if you've tried any of these, what your thoughts on them are, what you're most looking forward to seeing me do a review of. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. Oh, like this video. If you did make it this far especially, I'd really appreciate it. I'd love to have you subscribe. And as always, I hope you find some time to pamper yourself today. Bye.